Hey everybody, John here. I am on a big comfy couch with my dear friend, Petrina Pacheco. Petrina, welcome. Thank you. I feel like we're like in a Hollywood studio or something uh, here. It does We've... feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> we, we are at a beautiful studio called Dark Horse. It's in the Franklin, Tennessee area, and it's a pristine setting. Uh, very many famous people come out here uh, to record Dolly Parton, Faith Hill, wow. Amy Grant, all kinds of people. And so I, I just thought this was a fitting place to have our interview today and yes. just get to know you a little bit. Well, Petrina, yes. it's so good yes. to be with you today. And we're going to talk about your new uh, album. Your, we, we don't really, we call them albums, but you know, CDs and yes. uh, you even have a little USB card for people who don't use CDs anymore, but called I'm Not Her Anymore. We're going to talk all about those songs, but you and I have been working together yes. about a year and a half or so. And so how did you stumble into NCS world? I was moved at a retreat. I was 16 when I first felt a calling to sing. Um, and it was a church retreat with the youth uh, at the church I was going to at the time. And um, I just felt an, uh, an, a pulling just to get up and sing. I was singing throughout the retreat and people were like, wow, you have a really pretty voice. And I didn't know that at the time. I didn't know that I could sing. But at the end, at the closing of the retreat, um, the song came on and it was Mariah Carey and it uh -huh. was Hero. That oh, song yeah. Hero. Yeah. So it, that's a song It moves you anyway. It's a know? great song. A classic. And so when it came on, the, the one of the leaders there turned around and had the microphone and she kind of just looked at me and I said, oh, well, I'd never sing in front of anyone. <laughs> so I got up and I took the microphone and I started singing. Well, there were so many people who started crying, you know, out in the audience. Oh, my gosh. And so after that, I started having people asking me to sing here and there. So you felt this calling a bit when you were 16 in, in church, but you didn't really live that out. And I know you went through some really rough times. Mm -hmm. Would you share some of that with us? So um, my testimony is my mom and dad, they're still together. I think they just celebrated 53 years. Wow. Yeah. And so I grew up in that um, environment um, and that home life where they were together. And when I was old enough to leave home. I did. I kind of ventured out and I'm thinking, so my goal was like, I'm going to find a man just like my dad, you know, thinking that they were everywhere, right? Because I mean, <laughs> they're not. <laughs> no, but he was there. So he was definitely someone who was, you know, I looked up to, I really admired my parents. I just wanted that for myself. Mm. But when I started to go out and, and hang out with different people, I ended up in um, a relationship that was totally opposite. So it was um, an abusive relationship and I was stuck there for quite a while, for mm. uh, many, many years. And I stopped singing completely. Mm. So you wanted to have a relationship with a man that replicated the feelings you had for your dad because your dad had been good and you saw their relationship there that was strong. But that really wasn't what happened for you, no. was it? So the relationship I ended up in, um, you know, he was, um, he pursued me, you know, and I wasn't used to that either, you know, someone, um, he was just that type of person, real domineering, I mm. guess, and... Um, and did he find you because you were singing, still singing No, clubs, I actually or? wasn't singing. I was working at a casino at the time, and mm -hmm. he was, um, I, I met him there. And um, I, I didn't. I wasn't singing for quite a while. I had I had stopped a little. I was singing here and there. And so when I met him and we started dating, it was just a whole new world for me, you mm. know, because it was like I went from being a daughter to going out and like, okay, you know, it's time to kind of you were grow adulting. up. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, you and you looking for someone to marry and right. spend the rest of your life with. But um, I just wasn't aware that there were men like him out mm. there. More of a predator. Yes. Yeah. And now wow. looking back, that's exactly what it wow. was. I, I because I wasn't, I had never, I've never experienced that before. I'd never even mm. seen it and mm. didn't understand it. Right. Um, when it started happening, you know, of course he told me it was my fault and it was because of my actions and the things that I did or didn't do or, you know, whatever it was that, um, mm. right, it, it, that I made a mistake. It's and, just kind of the classic control freak, abusive. Yes. I actually had, um, he's knocked me completely unconscious mm. before mm. and um, I've had to get several stitches in my face 
to be honest with you, though, the thought of, you know, being away and, and not knowing where he was or, you know, and just having to look over, over my shoulder um, constantly was more, it was like more intense for me than being there and, and kind of knowing whether or not, or praying, honestly, is what I did to survive the night. It was more about just control and mm -hmm. making sure that I stayed afraid of him enough to right. where I didn't leave. Right. Of course, when I did try to leave the first time, um, it was, um, I'm going to hurt your family. The, you know, the whole mm. how that goes. And a lot of women, I, you know, I, I understand where they're coming from because you put yourself, you're thinking, well, I would rather sacrifice myself than my family. And so that's why I stayed mm. for as mm. long as I did is because the, you know, the thought of him hurting my family was not something right. that I was willing to right. risk. And that's, that was always a fear of mine mm -hmm. when the abuse was happening was that, I was going to die at that moment, and my parents wouldn't even know I was there. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was, it was horrible. It was a lot of mental. It would have to be yes. because your parents thought you were living with yes. a girlfriend. Yes, and so for them to find out and them not know it, you know. Right. Um, but my mom did find out at one point, you know, and it was the time that I'd left and then he threatened to kill my whole family. Mm. And so I ended up going back and I was like, okay, I'm just going to stay there mm. because at least my family will be safe. I'm not, but Lisa. So did your boss help you escape? She said the to me, she said, listen, she said, I cannot imagine what you're going through. I can't. She said, but I want you to know that I am here. She said, in the moment that you say you're ready to go, she said, you're welcome back here anytime. You don't have to give me a two-week notice, nothing. She said, you just get out of here. Mm. And so I had someone there who was, you know. An advocate for you. Yes, yeah. and it was so relieving. It was like. You know, I was like, wow, maybe I can do this. Mm. And so other people there, the girls that I worked with at the time, they were so key in helping me realize that there was so much more to me than what he told me there was. Because when I would look in the mirror, I would see what he said. Mm. You know, I'd see myself as who he said I was. Right. But for them, they would say, no, like, you look in the mirror, look at yourself. You know, you are so much more than that. And they would, they made me start seeing myself different mm. than what I was programmed to right. see myself. Right. And so it was a, we had another physical altercation and um, I just got to the point to where I said I, I can't do this anymore I didn't tell him of course but um, it was a really really bad one and I, I was pretty certain I was gonna die that night but every time I did feel like that was gonna be it you know and I prayed you know like get me through this Lord get mm. when it finally was over and he took it and he had my keys he had my purse and he made sure there was no chance of escape. Wow, this and sounds so, like a movie. Oh, it, it, yeah. yes, it felt like it. I mean, looking back, it's like very scary time of my life. And so um, I knew that night, I said, I, I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. So the next morning when I got up, I was hurt really bad. My, I could hardly walk. My back was, um, I remember my back being hurt and he had choked me. I had, I had bruises all around my neck because he had choked me oh to the point gosh. of almost passing out mm. that night. I told him, I said, I'm going to work. And he said, don't go to work today. You know, I mean, you can't. I mean, you have bruises all over you, you know. And so I said, I have to go to work. And I just knew I had to tell him that. And I said, I have to go to work because, I, you know, I can't call in. And uh, he said, but just, just stay here because he knew that it was a bad night. And I said, I have to. I said, I'll tell you what. And I said, I'll go. I said, and then when I get there, I'll just say, ask him if I can leave and tell him I don't feel well. And he said, okay, that's perfect. Just make sure you come back. And I said, okay. So I got up. I knew I wasn't going to work. Mm -hmm. I got up and I got. I put my uniform on. I was completely dressed and I walked out the door and I said, I said, see, ya. I said, you know, I mean, I'll be back and whatever. And I left and I knew I wasn't going wow. back. So when I left, I called my mom and I said, today's the day. And she said, oh, praise God. Mm -hmm. And she just mm -hmm. like, I don't remember. She started crying. Of or course. She was, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so she said, I've been having, she said, I've been having my suitcases packed for two weeks now. She was ready, and uh, I had been saving money, and I went to the bank, and I took out, you know, some money I'd been saving so that I could, you know, leave and make it, and then I went into hiding, so mm -hmm. I had to go. I went about 10, 11 hours away. Be the light that's shining in the darkest days. You've got to shine out mercy. 
Yeah. So there you are in hiding, you begin drinking, yes. and this goes on for how long? Uh, I lasted about three years. Wow. Yeah. Where you were just numbing out, using alcohol, yes. you know, to escape. It, it was so constant, and I'll tell you how bad it was. And so I understand how people, you know, if you don't know to turn to God, or if you don't, you know, you turn to something, mm -hmm. right, to help you with the pain, to help you get through. Um, so it was so bad at the time that I would wake up, and if I'd wake up around noon, you know, I would fix my first drink at 1230, you know, I mean, instead of having coffee, I would have you know, whiskey. And I would yeah. just drink again until I'd pass out again. And that was mm. just the, you know, thank God for the people that were, I was with, who took care of me. And, and they, they didn't quite understand, but they knew that it was something that I guess I, they need, mm. I needed to do in, in order right. to cope. I went down and I mean, it got even darker and darker mm. and, you know, I started gambling. There's a lot of casinos around there. And so, you know, gambling and drinking and just partying a lot, a lot of partying. Mm -hmm. And then it just got to the point where, um, I don't know, I was done. I would reached the end of myself. You know, I've always known that God was real. You know, it's something I just grew up, you know, I know. And my mom and dad, they brought us to church. I was in all Sunday schools and the whole nine yards. But, of course, as soon as I was old enough to make my own decision, I was mm -hmm. like, nah, I don't need that. Yeah, I know everything, sure you know. You do. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I start going to this church, some a little here and there. And uh, it was really intriguing, you know, to go in there. I love the music. The music is what always drew me to every mm -hmm. church. Of course. If I heard there was a revival going on, I wanted to go because the sound, the word revival meant good music. Mm. And so I wanted to go for that. So this church I was going to, every now and then, um, I heard there was a revival happening. So I said, I'm going to go to that. I think, you know, I like the music that they play. It's different. We grew up with the hymns and stuff. And, and so this church was playing more modern, you know, music and uh, contemporary. And I like the sound of it. We believe Jesus came to the earth, the holy man. And so when I went to the revival that very first day, I was um, sitting there that night. I had never met this man, never laid eyes on the, the speaker. And uh, he was from Baton Rouge, and he had come over there to, to do the revival. So he was up there talking. And, of course, I wasn't paying any attention to what he's saying, just to be honest with you. I mean, the music was over, and I was just kind of like, you know, in my own little Coasting, world. Yeah, yeah right? while he was preaching. So he was probably speaking maybe about 10 minutes, 15 minutes in, and he's, a, he's about an hour-long, you know, speaker. And um, so I'm sitting there thinking, uh, what can I make God, you know, do? And uh, so I said, okay, I got it. I said, I want you to make that man that's talking right now, I want, to make, I want you to make him stop, like, in his tracks, walk up to me, point his finger in my face, and tell me that you have big plans for my wow. life. Wow, wow, what a bold yeah. prayer to yeah. put before God. And then I was even a little more sarcastic, and I said, I want you to make him do it, like, right now. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So I said, as soon as I got that out of my mouth, I said, like, now. And that man stopped. He literally he stopped. He did not. He Mr. did John, not. He stopped. <laughs> no. I can't tell you how many times I tell you this testimony. I've not heard this. This is how I knew without a mm. shadow of a doubt. Like, all, everything left. He stopped what he was doing. He was actually facing that way. I was on this side. I was on the left side of the, con of the, the church. He was facing that way. He literally stopped and he looked that and he was looking that way. He turned around and he looked at me and I was back a ways. I was probably midways back and he just stared at me and I was like, oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. And so he walked up to me. He didn't say a word after that. He stopped talking. He turned, he looked at me. He walked directly up to me and while he's walking up to me, I'm looking like, you know, like what's happening. And he had the microphone in his hand and he bent down toward me. He put his finger in my he face. He did not. I promise you. Ask James. He did, he did ask not James. do that. James, you are, James got the meeting. I'm telling you. I up. promise you. I promise you. <laughs> this, And I'll tell you why. You, he put his finger in my face. And he had the microphone in his hand. And he said, girl, God does have big plans um, for your uh, life. And when he did. I'm getting uncomfortable. Because what if... <laughs> 
What if God's going to come tell me something like that? Look, I didn't think he was really going to do it either. You know, I mean, I really didn't. I was like, this is really far. You know, it's like, let me try to get something that's like way far-fetched out there. That was it. But God knows what we need, right? So when he did that and he said, girl, God does have big plans for your life. (sighs) When he did that, I literally jumped up out of my seat and I told my husband, I said, the only way I can describe it is, you know how you ever seen The Price is Right? When they call somebody's (laughs) name, right? They call somebody's name and they're like, come on down. Come on You're down. the next contestant. <laughs> Only That's it's God's. That's what it felt like. I literally jumped up out of my seat and I was hitting everybody around. Oh my God, oh my gosh. <laughs> but the crazy thing about oh it is nobody God. knew what happened because it all happened in my in head. In your head. Yes. Nobody oh, knew. my goodness. I thought everybody knew because it was so big. I'm on the edge of my <laughs> seat. I had to sit up for that. that. I promise you, I'm telling you, this happened. And so when it happened and I jumped up and I was screaming and I was touching people, it's like, yo, yo, did you hear that? And they were like, that's great. <laughs> no. Wonderful. I'm happy for you. Oh, you know, they, nobody understood. So I was just going, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. And so he says, get down here. He says, come to the front. And then he just... Be- he started speaking to me and he was like, God's got big plans. He's going to use you in a big way, bigger than you can imagine. All these things that I was just going, I didn't hear anything he said. Mm. Cause I was just like, I can't believe that just happened. I cannot believe that just happened. Yeah. And it, and I got to see just how real he was. You're my savior, my redeemer. You're my hope. So to God, a you know. transformational moment, yes. a Holy Spirit moment that totally Complete. changed the trajectory of your life and you know, brought your mom's prayers, your dad's prayers, yes. anybody that's been praying yes. for little Katrina, yes. you know, coming out of this terribly abusive situation yes. to now total radical transformation. Yes. And so how did the music thing begin to happen? I mean, you, we talked earlier, songs began to just, yes. we say God dropped songs yeah. on me, but you know, I really, I really believe that in your case, yes, you know, they're yeah. not always fully crafted, but there's right. such a deep inspiration there. there. So we've now come full circle to, yes. to this. We're going to talk about this in a moment. But how did this, how did the music thing start happening? And you singing in churches? So um, I started singing some there because I didn't miss church after that. That revival went on for months. And I mean, it was going, it was so powerful, the things that was happening in the revival, that we were having it five days a week, five nights a week, six nights a week, going to the revival constantly. We were all just excited about it. And, um, and they asked me if I wanted to join, you know, and start singing on the uh, praise team, which I was just happy about, Mm -hmm. but it was, it was so different for me because before when I sang, I, um, I sang for different reasons. You know, and I was used to being, you know, people looking at me and the attention being, you know, but getting up there then, I, it was like I wanted to hide. And it's like, how do I, I just want to be up here because it's amazing, you know, and I want to give thanks and praise to him for what he's done in my life. And I knew it was him, you know, that it's just brought me through it all and kept me alive. I guess that was in 2010, whenever that happened. Um, and it wasn't until about 2012 where I really started hearing just melodies and I was just thinking, I was hearing these songs and I was, it was more of me kind of singing praise, you know, it was words that God was, it was, it was like I, I was just feeling them and um, I didn't really know what to do with it then. I just heard I'm not her anymore. And so I had to actually start writing, you know, words like, okay, how do I say I'm not that person anymore? And so now the song has become something. Million dollar amazing. title. Yeah. I mean, amazing. it's like a, right. it's a great, yes. great so, title. Yeah. And then you get my email yeah. and uh, it says, God gave me a song. Now, now what? what? And you're intrigued. Like, yeah. What? You hadn't been reading my other emails, but that one <laughs> Sorry, gotcha. Just, yeah. So finally, you'll thank God for that idea. But <laughs> so we had this talk and. I, you know, you told me some of these things, but uh, I was pretty intrigued. Mm-hmm. We started coaching together over about a three-month period, and we kind of tumbled into this artist development relationship mm-hmm. that went beyond just, hey, let's work on your songs, right. and then good luck, you go do what you want to yes. do, right? Yes. And I know that I have, that, that my primary lane, that I have the, the gifts of bringing out of songwriters their messages and challenging them yeah. and you know oh, yeah. destroying their world a little bit but <laughs> yes but that i i, I want to bring in team members 
that can do something better than I can, you know. And then we've gone on to do some other things, connect you into management, um, graphics, and all kinds of things yes. that have helped set the stage for you to step into your ministry. We call it artist development, and, yeah. and there's that artistic side, but for you, this is about ministry. It's about exalting Christ in a, a deep and wonderful way. But talk about that, uh, the, the last year mm -hmm. that we've been working together on that level. How, how have you been challenged and, and what's been fulfilling in that way for you? Well, I have to say this though, um, and I, I think I've told you before, but to do the co-writing, I know that you, we talked about before, a lot of people kind of shy away from that, you know, because they kind of want to do their own thing or they mm -hmm. might be a little nervous with it. And I can't even explain how wow. amazing that was for me because I learned so much yeah. in that in that session. Yeah. You know, I, it just, it, it worked and the dynamic of it, it it was like the atmosphere was fully charged isn't and, it yeah 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 yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And we talk about that my husband and i talk about that like the moment that you know you were working on the um the chorus for uh we believe you know mm -hmm. you were thinking and you said hold on a second i'm hearing something and then we talk about that it's like the holy spirit was downloading into you i remember at that, that moment, moment. Yeah. yes yeah. and it was like and you were saying i really hope you like this <laughs> you know and um you know because it you just it was really awesome but when it came together i remember just being so full of emotion and just overwhelm yeah. you know with that and but you leveled up and so yeah. you know we had spent these months working yes. on what is great songwriting how do you really grab people's attention you know with rhyme and alliteration yes. and something that's unusual and and compelling as opposed to just blabbing out whatever you're thinking right yes and so when we got to that co-write yes it was like okay yeah it's like everything we had talked about it kind of fell in place. Yes, leveling up is a very good word yeah. to use there. And I remember the moment whenever I would, um, we were trying to think of lyrics at the time because we we're actually writing the song right then, you know, right then and there together. And um, I threw out some lyrics there and you were like, hmm, I kind of like that. I was like, yes, yeah. you know, because I'm thinking, you know, if he likes that, that means that I must be getting better. You were, you know? yeah, well, you totally did. <laughs> yeah, you, know? you were like, hey, I, I kind of like that. So now you have this amazing album, yes. which is so dear to my heart, of course, having worked with you on it. But this is a, an incredibly listenable album, and it's just one I think that people are going to have on repeat. It's yes. deep ministry, and yet crafted to the point where it can reach a lot of yes. people. And I think that's what's happening for you, is that your desire to share your testimony, not only in song, but in you know actually yes. speaking and talking about it. Yes. Um, that's happening for you now. Yes, it is. I've learned that, you know, if it's a call and you know it's a calling on your life that God has, you ask Him to open the doors that are only from Him and don't let you walk through any that's not from Him, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. we could spend so much time wasting on trying to figure things out you mm -hmm. know, when it's not really the route we're supposed to go. Yeah. So let him open the doors. And if you feel like it's songwriting and you're wanting to learn the craft of songwriting, He's the man, without a doubt. <laughs> I he like can that. He can teach you how to do it for sure. But, you know, not just that, though. You are a great coach. I have to add mm. that. You are a great coach in the studio, and I'm thankful that you took the time to come and mm. be in the studio with me. And um, I'll never forget, and even to this day, my husband will say when I'm singing, you know, let me hear some teeth. <laughs> he still says that, you know, and at the time I did not understand what you were right, saying, right. but whenever I did what you suggested, yeah. it made all the difference in the world. Yeah. So now that's what, uh, that's what he says. And there so you go. you're a great coach in, in every area. So don't mm. just, don't just limit it to yeah. songwriting. You're a great mentor, life coach. Mm. You, you're a great encourager, you know, so Thanks, I'm, Patrina. I'm thankful just to have you in my life. So. Well, I'm thankful because mm -hmm. just of the work of God in your life long before we ever met yeah but to be able to be some small part in helping bring these songs and this ministry to the world is, is yes. so fulfilling for me so yeah, that's great all right everybody awesome. Petrina mm -hmm. Pacheco thank you I'm not her anymore I kicked her to the curb and I slammed the door